Legends. Hello everybody, in this video I'm going to share with you tips and tricks for Minecraft Legends and everything you need to know before playing it. So if you're having problem understand how to play the game and need more information before jumping into it, this one is for you. Now keep in mind that Microsoft provided uh, me a copy of Minecraft Legends uh, for me to review. So when you start Minecraft Legends, you need to choose your hero. There are different options, and once you do that, you're going to see different options for you in terms of gameplay modes. So first of all, you have the campaign, which is the story-based mode, and it's a great place to start learning how to play the game. Uh, versus mode, which is the PvP game mode. You have the Lost Legends and Myths, which is uh, adventures uh, that are added monthly into the game, which you can try it out, and they give you rewards in Marketplace. Now keep in mind, um, in terms of the settings, uh, you have the option to play with a controller or keyboard and mouse. Uh, you can choose preferred networking region, you have audio options, video options, and accessibility options. Now I'm playing this on the PC and I decided to go and play with a keyboard and mouse. It was actually very, very comfortable for me to play with, so I stick with that. But again, controller is available for you as well. Now, Minecraft Legends is an action strategy game, and it brings some really fun stuff from Minecraft, like crafting, exploration, and survival. Now, I recommend starting with the campaign because it will teach you about all the basics. Uh, again, if you start with the keyboard and mouse or controller, it will show you the controls accordingly. Now, also keep in mind that the game was designed with cooperative play in mind and crossplay as well. Great. And the campaign itself will depends on the platform. For example, if you play on the Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One, you can play the campaign uh, co-op with two players. And all other platforms can play the campaign co-op with up to four players. So what do you do in this game? Well, in this game, the goal is to protect your bases and defeat enemy bases. You need to gather resources in order to craft different structures. This can be defensive structures, attack structures, or spawn structures that allow you to spawn allies. And basically, you'll become the commander. Although you can fight alone, you are really reliant on your army in order to do well in combat. So here you can see me using the gather stone command on this rectangular area where actually stones are located and they will be gathered. You can actually see plus 1300 something. You see at the bottom left, it shows me that these are the amount that will be collected over time. Now, there are a total of four hotbars. As you can see, the first one is a resource hotbar, the second one is for combat, the third one is for building, and the last one is upgrading in host structure hotbar. So basically, switching between those depends on the action that you want to do. In this particular example, I'm using the build hotbar in order to create a ramp to climb up. It can be used, for example, to get to high elevation, connect between places, or maybe just create a path, for example, above lava, so your allies won't actually get into it and get damaged, or just wouldn't be able to pass at all. Now, all the options in the hotbar are called a melodies. And one of the key features, of course, is combat hotbar, which can actually spawn allies. You do that using flames of creation, which allows you to spawn golems and mobs. Now, those specific structures that allows you to uh, spawn allies are called spawners. And if you need resources, you can get it from the bases, from chests, or of course, just exploring the world and harvesting. Remember that you need to first change to the combat world bar, and then you can actually decide which one you want to spawn. Depends, of course, on the enemy that is relevant. You can, of course, just put several of them, but there are any structure, they can get destroyed by enemies. Once you are close to them, you can just go and start spawning. You have a limit of how much you can spawn, but you can upgrade it in order to be able to spawn more. Now, each ally you spawn is going to take one flame of creation. You can see at the bottom right. Now I have zero out of 20, and this capacity can increase when you do some upgrades. So as you can see, I'm just building several of them right next to each other. You have the option to spawn, remove it, or recall all your allies that under your command to this specific place. The reason you want to do this is something that's spread apart or stuck in a certain place or you know and you can't actually access to them and if you really want to call everybody you can use it in order to recall them to that specific location. So here I spawned a few allies that can help me out but in order to command them well I need to do something. You can see the button right I have Q and E and the keyboard of course is going to be different if you're using a gamepad and basically I can call them to come to me and follow me or can I can just direct them into a specific place. You should just go to that direction. So you can see I'm using Q and then direct them to go forward. Hello 
little friends. The game also features much better degree of control, so we can just, you know, control specific type of enemies and just send one or all of them at once. You also have your man that allows you, of course, to uh, move fast uh, across the open world, and you're going to find new months as you continue and, you know, just explore the map. And you can actually change it while you get close to a specific one, you can change and use another mount. Now, this is the map. When you start the campaign, you're going to see a map, uh, which allows you to see in blue, you can see your places. Uh, they also fast travel to some of them, which you can do, or you can push fast travel a certain structure in order to spawn to a certain location. doesn't have to be, by the way, near your base. Or it actually can be near your base. You need to put it further away uh, outside of your bases. You can see where some of the allies you need to find and save in order to unlock them, so you can actually spawn them, like the creepers at the north. And you can see the death and night cycle at the top left. You also have the option to place markers. And when you put the marker, you can actually see it at the top, right? You can see a yellow marker. This actually points to the direction where you put the marker. Now, the day consists of day and night. And basically, at night, enemies, there's a possibility that enemies will try to attack one or more of your camps. The game will tell you ahead of time during the day and gonna mark it on the map with kind of running red ants uh, and animation and then you know that this or maybe sometimes it's more of your bases is gonna be attacked at night. Now some areas like the creepers for example you need to protect because otherwise you won't be able to spawn them again. And if one of your bases is uh, damaged uh, you still have the option to recapture it and uh, repair it. There's also a structure that allows you to repair uh, the different structure, not just the base itself, but different structures you put inside the base. So here, for example, I'm building a competitor hunt that allows me to repair the fountain. And then, of course, I can also get some loot for the chest, uh, which uh, there are some, by the way, allies that allows you to, uh, that enables you to collect resources uh, from time to time it putting in the chest. One to thank you too. And you have, by the way, to a chest in a certain base, you can quickly go there, grab resources, and just go to another base. Later on, you're gonna unlock more upgrade that will make it much easier. Uh, but I'm gonna leave you uh, leave you that to discover yourself. But you need this Prisma Ring. Uh, this is a rare one because you only get it once you destroy enemy structures. So if you want to upgrade and make uh, more structures, craft more structures, you need to make sure to attack enemy bases as well. Once you repel the invasion, you're gonna get rewarded for it. So again, when you play the campaign, you're going to roam the land, you're going to search and farm for resources, you're going to search for any bases to attack and get resources from that as well. Those, some of them will give you chests, uh, which uh, give you nice loot. You will be also be commanding your army and you carefully decide which mobs to spawn and where to send them and where to position them in order to make sure they survive the longest. You'll be building structures and even build structure to help your minions to pass through from dangerous areas like from lava, like you see here. You also need to prioritize which target you want to attack first. Uh, maybe you're going to attack some of the structures that can actually deal damage to you. Maybe you should prioritize them first. If you need any help knowing more, you can also open just the Book of Songs and just take a look and learn about their different resources, enemies, so you know actually what each one does. Also, don't forget to customize your hotbar because limited space and as you unlock new things, you want to make sure that you add them or replace them with others that you want to use. And some of the resources are just harder to get, so make sure to pay attention to that and don't overspend and use them when needed. Also pay attention to the minimap so we can see where enemies are going to attack you next, if at all. And it's the things that you do in day and night in order to get be prepared basically for everything. Maybe you decided the base you're gonna, the enemy is gonna attack needs more defenses, so spend time there during the day rather than go and try to eliminate uh, some of the enemy bases. And never forget to visit the Well of Fate. This is the place we're gonna do all your upgrades. So if you feel like you were missing more space for resources, you're gonna unlock new structures. All of these type of upgrades are in a single place. So if you ask yourself at certain point, how can I get to have certain amount more? This is the place where you do so, and more. With every new melody, your relationship with the Allays grows. This tune will help them mine iron for your building needs. 
Also, don't forget to check the map and check your camps. Some of the camps just might be full and it's just better to go there and just get all that uh, extra resources. This is sometimes better than just trying to farm because you can get it immediately and sometimes it's very important to get them fast. For example, if a base under attack, you need more resources, you can actually go to a base, get resource and go to another base and use it. When you do resource gathering, try to put it in inside as many, for example, trees, as many as uh, trees as possible, rather than just a few. You're just going to get better resource and it's better utilized of your workers, which are limited, as you can see at the bottom left, at each single time. Some of the rare resources, like diamonds, for example, you can actually find, uh, again, it depends, it's possibly generated in some of the, well, elevated areas. So make sure to just explore the map. You might find some really cool resources and needed resources as you explore map in areas that are not that convenient to get to. Now, there are structures that you can actually put in areas uh, controlled by the piglins, that was red ones. So make sure to put in a bit outside and then you can just retreat, spawn more if needed and get back to the battle. Now, don't forget to bring those healers. They can be very, very useful in order to keep your enemy up and alive. You also have the option uh, to command, using control to command your army, whether it's single enemy, moving the entire enemy, or just move a group of certain enemies uh, without actually moving all of them at once. So make sure to try that out and use it to your advantage. So you can one click or long hold, for example, sending just a healer into a specific group rather than sending all of them. If you're using the keyboard, by the way, you can control the groups by using the number keys 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then the scroll on your mouse button in order to scroll in each category. Keep in mind you have a limited amount of uh, mobs you can actually have under your control following you, but as you progress, you're gonna unlock the option to have much more. And there's also a structure that allows you to put a respawn point. Uh, it's quite resource uh, heavy, but again, if you don't want to kind of move to, you know, a lot in order to get to a specific place, you can do that. Many more advanced tips will follow. If you found this video useful, consider leaving a like and subscribe because more videos are coming. So make sure to subscribe and I'm going to share more, of course, things related specifically for PvP as well uh, in later videos. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Thank you. You are doing well. The piglins do not give up easily.